this carving is a special one to me. Grandpa's cabin was a place where lots of memories were made, ones that I'll always cherish. My grandpa was an amazing person. He will forever be loved and missed. This carving is for him. After lowering the background, I precisely outlined the edge of the cabin all the way around using a straight bench chisel. It's important at this step to make sure my strokes are vertical. If I accidentally undercut or slope out, it's going to throw the perspective off of the cabin when I start to shape it. The cabin was the most important part of the carving, so I was willing to put in extra time to get it right. When working on it, I learned that a well-designed sketch is crucial to the overall success of how it turns out. I was able to reference the sketch and redraw parts that were carved away during the shaping. Being able to do that really helped me out throughout the carve. At this point, I'm just establishing the general shape of the cabin. The corner of the cabin closest to the viewer is almost at the foreground of the wood, so I carved each side from that point to the desired depth. I made sure I tapered evenly and I didn't take too much wood off at once. I wanted the sides of the cabin to be as flat as possible. The roof was done similar to the sides. I re-established the roof line from the design and tapered back from that point towards the background. This was an important step because it really changed the lighting to the cabin. Using a caliper, I was able to redraw the design of the porch back onto the cabin. I then carved each opening back to the same depth, keeping everything proportional. With the deck portion of the porch, I just tapered back from the foreground of the layer back to the desired depth of the porch side. This again changes the lighting in the cabin, giving the porch some depth. Considering that the posts are perpendicular to the grain, I didn't want to make them too weak. So I undercut them, but I left wood remaining so it's still connected to the layer underneath. Once I carved back the porch wall to my desired depth, I had a certain amount of wood to work with on the firewood box and front railing. The firewood box wasn't crucial to get perfect or even carve at all, but it's the little details though that give the carving character. I had to be careful when carving the railings because they were easy to break off. I had to experiment with chisels and what was the best way to carve this area. After attempts with different things, I found the skew chisel worked the best, basically chip carving the gaps between the railings. The flower box was a little tricky. I had to account for it from the beginning of the carve, 
So as I shaped the cabin, I left a section uncarved so I could later carve the flower box. This was fun to carve and watch it transform. It's too far away to try to carve individual flowers. So with two different sized rounded burrs, I power carved a flower texture. I just made random small strokes varying in pressure with the large burr, then repeated the technique with the small burr. Once I finalized the shape of the cabin, I began to work on roughing in the windows and door. This was again a bit tricky inside the porch because there's a lot going on, so that area took some time. The windows were relatively straightforward though. Once I transferred the design onto the wood from the sketch, I just carved accordingly. I made shallow cuts here. If I cut too deep around the windows, it would throw the perspective off and make the windows look like they're popping out of the wall. The final step to finish off the cabin was carving in the vertical siding and shingles on the roof. I think that this was a great final touch and really made the whole cabin come together nicely. It was crucial to make sure the spacing was consistent and vertical throughout. If not, it would really skew the perspective of the cabin. Overall, I'm super happy with the way the cabin turned out in the end. After completing the cabin, I began working on the background. In this case, I wanted a dense woods look throughout the entire back portion of the carving. At this point, it isn't crucial to be exact in relation to the sketch. I actually add or take things out in areas depending on how tricky the area is to carve. The important part in this step is to just not nick or carve into the cabin at all. That could ruin the carving with just one mistake. Because of the depth I'm carving here, I mix in some Dremel power carving. I just don't have the gouge collection yet to be able to carve these areas traditionally. After carving in the bark texture on the trees, I started to rough in the treetops. I didn't carve away this area in the beginning when initially lowering the background because I wanted as much wood as I could for creating depth within the trees. Here I'm creating large layers and shadows, breaking up that big area of treetop. I change up my stroke, giving it a random look to it. Once I finished the large shaping, I used a large rounded Dremel burr and began carving the leaf texture. 
I again was constantly changing my stroke direction and pressure. I then went over the same area again with a small rounded Dremel burr using the same technique. I loved how the texture turned out and I think it really added a unique aspect to the overall carving. I'll definitely apply this leaf texture technique to carvings in the future. After finishing the leaf texture, the final step was to carve in the grass on the ground layer. I made horizontal strokes with a small gouge, then followed up over the same area with light dremel strokes in random directions using a skinny pointed burr. This cabin was a symbol of my grandpa's loving spirit. It was a place where family and friends would gather and great memories were made. His spirit was so contagious, he'd touch and have a positive impact on every single person he met. He was never afraid to share his faith and his love for God. My grandpa set a great example for the family and he will forever live on in every one of us.